So you just bought the M2 Mac Mini and now you need a monitor? Let's talk about it. All right, welcome back to the channel. So if you have not been under a rock lately, you know one thing. The M2 Mac Mini came out recently and people love it, right? It starts at $599, sometimes lower. The Pro model is $1299. Just a great system overall, performs really well. Well, what I wanna do in this video is I wanna set this up for everybody. The big problem is, is what monitor do you get for this, right? Obviously, you know, it doesn't come with one. It's just basically a standalone computer. And you need to get one that's compatible with Macs. You're not gonna have a lot of problem with, that you're happy with. So what this video is gonna do is I'm gonna go through, I think I have like 10 or 11 different monitors. They're no particular order, although I'm gonna start with the, the main one. And we're gonna talk about them. I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what they are, how much they cost, and basically these are all monitors that are not only recommended by me, but I went through and did some research on places that rate these, and they all rate them very well for the M2 Mac Mini. So if you're looking for like either a 4K monitor, a 14 or 5K monitor, 4K, 1440p, and even 1080p, I have some in here. So what I'll go, I mean, I'm just gonna go through everything with you. I'm gonna share the links in the video description so you can go ahead and just do your own research afterwards. And what I recommend you doing is just watching this, looking at it, maybe mark down the model numbers you like, and then go ahead and do your own research before you buy anything. Make sure it's compatible as far as the kind of ports you want to use and the cables you have. There's always some oddities with all monitors and all type of connections and cables and everything, so just keep that in mind. This is just a recommendation to show you, and uh, if you're interested in getting a monitor for the M2 Mac Mini, let's get into it. And uh, I'm going to share my screen here and show you a lot of different pictures and a lot of different examples. Let's go. All right, number one, I just have to get this out of the way, is gonna be the Cadillac of all monitors for the Macs. It's gonna be basically the Apple Studio Display, all right? And this comes in at about 1,500 bucks if you're gonna buy it, and I'll have a link to Amazon, and obviously you can go to Apple and buy it as well. So for 1599, what do you get? Well, let's take a look. It's 5120 by 2880 5K, 618 kind of nits of brightness, at least it's been measured around there. Very, very bright screen. And then basically, it has an IPS panel, 60 hertz only. It's got accurate RGB, uh, sRGB, I'm sorry. It's got really good viewing angles and really deep blacks as well. All right, so some of the problems, obviously, is the price. I mean, it's almost 1500 bucks. And then you also you can't, you know, the stand is not the best ergonomics. Obviously, you have to buy different types of stands, and you can't wall mount it if you buy the stand. So there's some problems there as well. So the price is a big price point, and you can see everything there, $15.99. But I did a video recently, and it's basically, if you go to the Apple Refurbished store right now, they do sell it right now for $13.59. So it's a couple hundred, what is that, $240 bucks off of it. So that price is getting a little closer. So if you're looking for a 5K monitor for sure, this is the one to get, especially for $13.59 from the refurbished store. It's gonna be like brand new, trust me. I got a bunch of stuff from there. Don't worry about it. And uh, you know, long story short, it's just probably the best of the bunch. All right, number two, and this again, this is no particular order. It's the Dell UltraSharp U2723QE. And this is gonna be basically a 4K panel. So we're not talking 5K, we're talking 4K here. It's 3840 by 2160. It's an IPS panel. It's got HDR10. It's, uh, again, 60 hertz, I believe, 60 hertz. It's, um, text clarity is phenomenal on this. That's what people say. So we got really good text clarity, good viewing angles on this system as well. This system comes in at 532 bucks, though, so it's not going to be the cheapest, obviously. It's nowhere close to the studio display. Obviously, you get a lot less with it. But overall, it's, it's still kind of more of a pricey monitor. And then if you keep looking, it's got a built-in KVM switch. And you can control, uh, you know, obviously things like your keyboard and you can plug other things into it. So it's got that added functionality. It does have USB-C as well to connect your M2 Mac Mini in if you want to do that. And uh, it says it's got good SDR uh, peak brightness as well. I think it's, let me see if I can find it here. I mean, the peak brightness obviously is not going to be, I think, of the, the Ultra or the uh, studio displays like in the 600s. You got to keep in mind that any monitor like in the three to 400 peak brightness of nits is going to be fairly good for these kind of more discount monitors. And this one comes in about 350 peak brightness nits. So it's not the highest, but it's definitely going to be bright enough for most cases. And, and definitely I've seen this one in person and it works great. All right, so if you don't want to spend up, you know, 500 and something dollars, the next one here is going to be by Dell again. Again, no particular order. This is the Dell S2722 QC. Comes in at 399 bucks here, a little bit better price point here. This panel is going to be basically a 27-inch 3840 by 2160. It's an IPS panel. It's 4K, like I said, 60 hertz, HDR10 it does have. 
It comes in at a little bit brighter than the last one at 382 peak brightness for the nits, which is actually pretty good. And then basically, it's got no KVM switch in this one. That's one of the differences. And it does have USB-C and display port to connect if you want to go ahead. Those are the two different options on this system. And then basically, it's got wide viewing angles. Does not have sRGB, which is kind of the limited thing. It's got limited Adobe. It's got basically the Adobe RGB. And uh, the stand has good ergonomics as well, so it's got a good stand compared to the studio display. But for $399, this is actually a quality one, and it works really well with any of the Mac Minis. So definitely look at it as the Dell 27, S27, 22, QC, 27 inch, and uh, it's a mouthful, but, but that's gonna be number three. All right, so number four is gonna be very similar to number three. It's actually got the same stand, it's got the same basic panel, but it's a lot cheaper. Why is it a lot cheaper? Well, let's get into that. So this one's gonna be the Dell. It's the 20, S2721QS. So it's very similar. There's the model number. I'll show you some pictures as I'm talking here. So what's the main difference here? Well, it's basically, it does not have eight, uh, USB-C. It's got only HDMI. So if you, if you can connect to an HDMI cable and you wanna do that through the M2 Mac Mini, and you're basically able to do that, and that's the only kind of connection you need, then this is a great choice. Why is it? Because it's only 249 bucks. So it's actually very, very similar to the last monitor. It's basically got the IPS panel. It's basically gonna obviously be 4K, uh, 38, what is it, 3840 by 2160 ultra thin IPS panel but it's basically 150 bucks cheaper than the last one only really because it doesn't have the USB-C port for the most part and uh, but beyond that it's basically probably a steal at 249 bucks for a 4k panel all right so if you're looking for kind of a cheap price point as well we're going to talk about some 1440 monitors here 1440p monitors so the next one on the list that you might consider it's going to be the Asus ProArt display it's the PA278 QV comes in at 289 bucks. So I'll show you pictures as I'm talking about this. It's a 27 inch IPS, 75 Hertz. And again, it's the resolution is 2560 by 1440. It's got no HDR 10 support. So for this type of a monitor though, it's rated as very sharp. It's got good viewing angles. The peak brightness is actually, I think it's at around like 417 or something like that. So it's actually a really bright monitor. It's got a little extra refresh rate on it, 1440p, but it's been tested on these type of monitors. So for 289, the Asus ProArt, it's not a bad monitor. Obviously you're only getting that 1440p, so you gotta take that with a grain of salt, but not bad overall. All right, so number six is gonna be extremely cheap monitor, and I'm gonna give you some reasons why you'd wanna pick this up, but we're gonna then get back to some other more expensive ones in a second. This one's the Asus, it's the VG246H, uh, VG246H. It's only gonna be a 24 inch display, it's an IPS panel, it's 24 inches, it's only got 290 nits of brightness, but it's still plenty bright for most, most applications. It's not the, the best, obviously, but good enough for most cases. And then basically it's 75 hertz, which is a good surprise, 1080p only. Again, that's the main thing here, 1080p we're talking. And then basically no HDR, and may, you know, it, it basically has very little input lag. So the reason I like this monitor though is this is, and it's the price here. It's gonna be $119.99 right now on sale. So for less than 120 bucks, you can kind of have that secondary screen. I, I totally recommend that for the cost on it. It does say, you know, it definitely just is a good monitor overall for a 1080p screen. I know when you're talking M2 Mac minis, that's not always the best option, but if you have a very low budget and you just wanna know if something's gonna work fairly well with your Mac, this is actually a good one at 119. Again, it's the Asus VG246H, check it out. All right, so this next one has actually got a couple different surprising things and it's got a lower price point. The one thing it's got going against it is gonna be it's only 1440p, so you know, obviously keep that with a grain of salt, it's 2560 by 1440. But this is gonna be the Gigabyte M27Q, 27 inch display, so 27 inches again. So what, what makes this up? Why is this something that we recommend? Well, let's get into the numbers here. So again, it's the IPS panel. This is 100 and up to 170 hertz. Again, you may not be able to get all that out of it with the Mac that you have, but 170 hertz. So if you're maybe using this as also for gaming, maybe on a PC and you wanna move between the two monitors, this could be a really good option. It's uh, again, I said 2560 by 1440. It's got a high refresh rate, super high refresh rate and response rate, so it's good for gaming if you do do that on the side. And then basically, it does have you know poor ergonomics on the stand, so it's not as movable as the other ones I talked about. Probably more so than the studio display for sure. And then it's got a, it's super bright actually. For, for a monitor of this cost, it's uh, 434 nits only, only. 434 nits, yes, it's high, <laughs> only. Anyways, this monitor comes in at 289 bucks only. That's what I wanted to say. There, there was the only. But anyways, long story short, it's a great monitor for, for what you're getting for the cost for 289 bucks. So can, consider it, I mean, gigabyte, gigabit, however you want to say it. They don't, you know, you don't kind of think of them for monitors, but in this case, they made a good one. 
All right, so the next one we've heard about a lot, and there's gonna be one reason why I'm recommending this, so stay, stay here and I'll show you why it is. So this is the kind of the true and tested, it's getting old now, but it's basically the LG Ultrafine 27 inch. It's, I believe that the number is 27MD5KL-B, that's a mouthful, but this is a 5K panel, and it's one that basically was the same, I think it's basically the same panel that was in the 27 inch IMAX, and obviously we know this works really well with Macs, so this is a good option here. The price of it though, a couple different things. I want to just stay tuned because there's actually a cheaper price than this. But right now on Amazon, it's 1157 bucks. So that's not too bad for a 5K panel. It's coming down slightly on that. And uh, it's just a good panel overall. And it's got 500 nits of brightness, just like the, the uh, iMac that used to be, you know, the 27 inch iMac had the same, same nits of brightness. So plenty bright there for sure. 60 Hertz, it's got three USB-C ports, which is great for connecting into it. It's 5120. 20 by 2880, so again, full 5K. But the reason I recommend this, not so much for 1157, because I would just get the studio display for that 13 something, if you can pick it up on the Apple refurbished store. But look at this over here, I'll show you a quick thing. Up here, it's got 905 bucks if you want to get a renewed model. So when you're down at 905, almost, almost in that 899 cost, that's where we want to be. It's going to be renewed, but I heard it comes, you know, it's got really good reviews. They almost come very clean and perfect. A lot of people think they might be new units. So for that price, for when you're getting close to 899, 900 bucks, now you got to consider that instead of spending an extra four or 500 on the studio display. So it just comes down to if you have the money or not, but that's a good recommendation for a 5K that you know is going to work all the time. All right, the last one, again, it's got mixed reviews, but I think it works fairly well with Max. It's been tested by Max reviews. Uh, Marquise Brown Lee. A lot of people have tested this monitor out like maybe about a year ago or so, and it's going to be the Samsung M8 monitor. This is going to be a 4K 32 inch panel, so that's actually really cool. It's got some built in features if you watch TV and stuff on it. There's some issues with trying to get it to work perfectly and stuff, and, and, and more or less it's more about maybe the speakers and the microphone on it. It's pretty low quality as far as the sound, but throw all that away. For a 32 inch uh, 4K screen, this is actually a pretty phenomenal monitor, but it depends on the cost, right? Well, right now, if you get the white version, I'm gonna show you some screens up here. It's only 349 bucks right now on Amazon. So this thing used to, I think it came in like around seven, 800 bucks when it came out like a year ago. It kept considerably dropping. Now it's 349 bucks. So what does it come with? It's got the USB-C connector. It's got HDR 10 plus. It's 3840 by 2160, 60 Hertz, 4K. They call it the Samsung uh, 32 inch, I believe it's the M80B, I believe what they're calling it, on, at least here on, on uh, the Amazon, so that's the number that I'm looking up here. And uh, basically though, the, the cost here, I mean obviously, there, I don't know why, but I mean if you go, it's got a bunch of different colors to kind of match different, you know, I guess it's to match your, your uh, you know, MacBook Airs or something, I don't know what, what they came out with it, but like the green version here, if I click on it, the green version is gonna be a lot more, it's 504 bucks, but if you go with that white model, um, and this thing does come with like a little controller too, like it's almost like a TV, but it's actually a pretty good monitor, but the white version, Again, it comes in a lot cheaper, and that was that 349 or whatever it is, which is an unheard of price. I don't know how long it's gonna stay like this. So if you're watching this and it's not that price, it was at one time, so maybe wait until it gets there again. All right, and then a couple notable mentions. I mean, there's a there's an M7, Samsung M7 as well, which is the model kind of before this, a year before. That works pretty well for the cost, and you can pick those up pretty cheap. But the one to watch out for, and I did a video, check out my channel, I did a video fully on this one. It's gonna basically be the Samsung S9. It's not out yet, but it's gonna be a 5K panel that they're coming out with, and I think it's gonna be below the $1,000 price point, so it's one to keep an eye on. It's going to be, uh, uh, you know, pretty fair. I think it's 27 inch only. I have to verify that. I think it's 27, but it's going to be 5K and it's going to be very comparable to a studio display, but it's going to be a matte, you know, obviously a matte finish. If you don't like that, then it's not going to work for you. Obviously get the studio display, but if it comes in at that 999 to 800 price range to start, we can maybe see a trickle down like this other M8 version did, and it's going to be really attractive maybe in a few months. So that's just one to keep an eye open for. It's going to come out maybe in the next one or two months. All right, so let's wrap this up so it doesn't get too long. I'll probably do another one with some additional monitors because I know there's a ton of them out there, but I just wanted to get people started on if you're looking, you know, obviously for a monitor for your M2 Mac Mini, you're excited about it, what are some monitors that you can kind of trust at least as far as being fairly good, giving you, they're not gonna, like, let's just be honest, they're not gonna be like the Mac Studio display, right? They're not gonna be as good, they're not gonna be all 5K panels, but if you're looking for something at your price point and you wanna spend be like 500 or less, somewhere in that range, these are all good monitors, except for some of those more expensive ones like I showed you, but those are a 5K. So keep in mind that these are gonna always usually work with your systems, they've been tested, and uh, you won't run into a lot of the problems with like kind of the ALS, you know, basically the, the way the text looks and it scales wrong and all that. 
So anyways, let me know what you think. Do you guys like these kind of videos? Definitely click the like button if you can and subscribe. It just helps me out in general. If you use the links uh, below, you know, obviously in my description, I do get a small percentage, full disclosure, but I'm not doing it for that. Obviously, very few people buy that way, but it does help the channel grow, so I appreciate it if you do it. I appreciate it very much for my work here. And uh, we'll talk to everybody soon. I'll have another one of these maybe within a month or so. Talk to you in a little bit. Peace.